Hey guys, welcome back to Music Talk with John. Today I'm working my way, continuing through my record collection, starting with The Cure and up to Dion. The Dion album is actually interesting because it's a blues album that he put together. It's not the doo-wop stuff that he was famous for. And he has a lot of special guests on there, so I'll be talking about that. So uh, sit back, kick your feet up, and uh, let's talk music. Okay, so we're starting with The Cure here. This is a Pornography. This came out in 1982. This was their fourth studio album. My copy here has no pops and it has a very good sound to it. It is a uh, reissue on 180 gram and it was actually remastered by Robert Smith. So it, it sounds really good. I don't know what, the, what it sounded like before to be honest with you, but this copy sounds really good. It's a, it's a moody album, it's dark, it has an ambient sound to it. This uh, The inside here, the sleeve has the lyrics and some credits and an interesting photo of them, kind of blurred and funky looking. But um, yeah, the, the lyrics are out there. But what I like about it is they, they really feed the imagination. He doesn't come out and just tell you what he's talking about. He he paints a picture for you and then you have to it's like looking at a, a painting and trying to figure out what's going on in there like an obscure painting so and the research that i did on this i guess this was the third third of the three albums that they were going through a really dark phase of the band drug use and things like that and, and robert smith was uh, very suicidal and he when he made this album he put it together saying either i'm gonna uh, basically kill myself or I'm going to um, put everything into this album and get it all out of me and move on. So good thing he made this album because many other albums came after this uh, that, that are great. So anyway, this is a pornography by The Cure. And I do look forward to getting some more Cure albums. I just haven't built that uh, collection up yet. But this was my first. The next one we have here, this is... a. Uh, Terrence Trent Darby, this is uh, came out in 1987, and this is uh, Introducing the Hardline according to Terrence Trent Darby. And I really wish I would have um, picked this album up in the 80s. It's, it's, it's such a good album. The two main songs he had off of here, uh, Wishing Well played a lot, and uh, Sign Your Name played uh, a lot also. And I really wish I, like I said, I had picked this up in the uh, the '80s when it came out because it, it would have really opened my eyes to some different music. There's this this album goes from R&B to soul to some funk in there. His voice is just amazing. There's a the the, the first song on here, "If You All Get to Heaven." I love it because it's kind of like talking about the uh, contradiction in religion and. Um, the world and uh, how uh, leaders are basically in it for the glory and whoever dies they die kind of thing so it's it's he has a lot to say in these in these lyrics uh, the copy that I have here is um, there's a little couple pops on there but the sound is overall uh, it's a good sound the other one that sticks out on this album for me too is um, as yet untitled I think, yeah, it's yet untitled. It's an acapella song, really cool. It, really, his voice shines. He's just got such a strong voice on there. And uh, I meant to look it up, but I know Terrence Trent Darby, he did change his name to um, I, another name. I don't remember what the name is. I was going to look that up. So he kind of wanted a new identity, I guess. So he, he went through that name change. So it's on black vinyl. And I believe it's an original. I don't know what pressing it is. I, I haven't really researched that, but it is um, the copyright on this one is um, 87. So it is, uh, and it's on the thinner vinyl. So assuming it's pretty close to an original copy. Then there is Andre Day. This came out in 2015. This is her debut album, Cheers to the Fall. And I love this album. Now, you can hear this is the time of you know after amy winehouse and i don't know if you're familiar with duffy she had a, a really good album called rock fairy and they had uh duffy and amy winehouse had a very similar sound it was this sort of retro 60s sound and um andre day kind of came in i think after if i have my my uh, my thoughts right but i think she came in a little bit after those two so there are um there are 
songs on here that it does sound like Amy Winehouse, like the, the production all the way through does, but there's some songs it's like, wow. I mean, even the accenting that she does on this um, really channels Amy Winehouse. So you can hear that. And then there's some songs on here that I think remind me of, of Duffy a bit. And then there's songs that it just, you know, it's Andra doing her thing and her personalities in there. I mean, she has her own touch and in, in everything anyway, but some are a little bit closer to the other artists. The big songs on here for me, um, there's one that played a lot. It was called Rise Up. And if you play it, Andra Day Rise Up, you've probably heard it. It's a very inspirational song. The video is, yeah, I, I kind of get teary-eyed every time I watch it because I have a daughter with a disability. And the video is a, a lady who is married or in a relationship with a man in a wheelchair and what they kind of go through a little bit and what their day's like and it's it's just a nice video so i get goosebumps even just thinking about it now and uh the other songs on here that stick out for me are gold um mistakes i love the chorus on mistakes and um actually Stevie Wonder, and I don't know if he was part of finding her or what it was, because there was actually a Christmas commercial years ago with Stevie Wonder and her in the Christmas commercial. Um, but Stevie Wonder plays harmonica on um, City Burns on this, and it's got that signature Stevie Wonder harmonic guitar thing going on, or not guitar, um, harmonic, harmonic harmonica sound going. So you can definitely tell it's Stevie right when you hear it. So, but this this is a great album. She hasn't uh, put out another one that I know of. She did do a, she starred as Billie Holiday in a, uh, I, don't know, I can't remember if it was a Netflix movie or what it was, but it was a really good movie about Billie Holiday. And she just, I mean, chameleon-like just turned into Billie Holiday. Um, so if you haven't seen that movie, check it out. And I have that album actually within my jazz stuff. So I'll be talking about the, that later on in a different episode because it's more jazz related than um, this pop rock, basically. So anyway, Andre Day, cheers to the fall. And like I said, that was uh, 2015. And it is uh, 180 gram and it's on black vinyl. Then we have a huge album here that uh, everybody's pretty much familiar with, I would think by now. It just came out in 1970. So this is Derek and the Dominoes, uh, Layla. And I think it's always Layla and Assorted and other Assorted love songs. Uh, this is Eric Clapton, Bobby Whitlock, Carl Riddell, Rattle, sorry, and uh, Jim Gordon. This is a really good copy, no pops. It is a MoFi recording, so this is, it's it's recorded basically uh, pressed on um, a different sort of vinyl that allows a better quality, and that's why um, MoFi is uh, known for their quality. They use uh, different pressing, less steps in their st uh, pressing in their um their stages to keep the quality tight instead of making copies upon copies to burn a record so um and this album shines as far as that goes it's uh it's interesting um it, they were kind of a it, clapton said they were like a make-believe band and they weren't really going to last because of the fact that they were all kind of being somebody else and layla is patty boyd if uh, you don't know the story, it's it, Patty was uh, George Harrison's wife first, and Eric Clapton fell in love with her, and ended up she ended up leaving George Harrison and moving on with Clapton. And George Harrison wrote the song "Something for Her." I've mentioned this in a previous episode, and so at the time, Eric Clapton was infatuated with her, and he couldn't say "Oh, Patty," you know. Plus, that probably wouldn't have sounded as cool as Layla. So it was a disguise, and Layla was a disguise for that. Um, just so he could still express his love for her, but um, not reveal it. So basically, and uh, the guys in this band with him, um, I mentioned uh, in a previous video. Also, the three other guys: um, Bobby Whitlock, Carl Rattle, Rattle. I always get his name mixed up. Uh, and Jim Gordon. They were all in uh, Delaney and Bonnie and Friends, and. Um, that's where Clapton got to know them, and they actually played all all these guys actually played on George Harrison's All Things Must Pass album. So they had a history together, and they pretty much just got together and put this this together, which is, I mean, it, this is the greatest hits album. Uh, I looked away, Bell Bottom Blues, Keep on Growing, uh, Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out, um, Key to the Highways on here, Tell the Truth, Why Does Love Have to Be So Sad, Have You Ever Loved a Woman, Little Wing, and that was a tribute because uh, Hendrix had passed away, so they did a tribute to him with the Little Wing song. 
of course, Layla and, you know, that song. And then a nice ending is um, Thorn Tree in the Garden. Nice little, nice little slow song there at the end. I can't say enough about it. I, this is just an album that I've, I've picked up and started listening to when I was 16, and it hasn't gotten old. I can put this thing on any time and just listen to it, so it's great. Hey, I thought I'd jump in here real quick because I just realized when I was talking about Layla, I didn't mention Dwayne Allman, and you can't talk about Layla without mentioning Dwayne Allman. He was uh, an addition, a welcome addition to that album. Uh, his uh, steel, um, not steel, but slide guitar is all over that thing, so when you hear that, that's Dwayne Allman. So we just wanted to put that in there because you, you can't, like I said, you can't talk about Layla without mentioning Dwayne Allman. And unfortunately, he passed away, I don't think, too much longer after Layla was released or whatever. And I believe it was a motorcycle accident. So it's it's a shame because who would have knows what he would have put together uh, if he would have lived longer. So it's just like Hendrix and people like that when they die. It's like, man, you know, what what, what did we miss out on? So anyway, just uh, want to get a little shout out to uh, Dwayne there. Next one I have here is Neil Diamond and I recently kind of cleaned my Neil Diamond out a little bit. I'm down to two albums because uh, the other ones I had just had so many pops on them. Um, this album that I still have does have some pops but I can't find a, another copy of it really anywhere so I decided even with some irritating pops on it, not crazy, it's not every song um, but it's there um, and I will be looking for it uh, reissue. Don't know if they're going to do it, but this is um, Neil Diamond. It's Shiloh. It's a compilation album. For some reason, I thought it was a um, an album, but I read up on it. It's actually a, a compilation album, and I guess it makes sense because there's so many good songs on here. This compilation was released in 1970, um, and I kind of like the the front of it because it a lot of them. This is a clean one, but a lot of the times these people. Uh, these people, uh, people who owned it, actually connected the dots on there and put it, put the, put it together. So I'm glad I have one without it. So this has everything from the the song Shiloh, which I like a lot, into Kentucky, uh, Kentucky Woman, Girl You'll Be a Woman Soon, Monday Monday, the one made popular by uh, the Mamas and Papas, Cherry Cherry, Solitary Man, great song, I'm a Believer, made popular by the Monkees, Red Red Wine, made popular by. Um, uh, I want to say it's not the B-52s. Um, forgot the name of the band now. Uh, but popular remake, UB-40, that's who it was, um, did that. And it was very popular. And they did a great job. They put they put their own twist on that song. Uh, Thank the Lord for the Nighttime. So this is just a great album. This is good Neil Diamond. This is before he got cheesy with the Barbra Streisand and just really cheesy stuff. I definitely recommend this album if you want to get into Neil Diamond. Um, like I said, it's, it's Shiloh. The next Neil Diamond I have here. Uh, if you saw my recent videos with my dad, we brought this one up. This was hot August night. It's just an odd picture for somebody like Neil Diamond. He was not like a rock and roll guy. He just looks like he's stoned out or something here. He's really doing his thing in his uh, denim sort of suit with the beads. And uh, yeah, this is the one that had the, the tree people where he recognized people that were way out. They couldn't afford tickets and they were up in the trees. Uh, watching the concert, he recognized them and said, you know, we, we see you out there, we recognize you. This just has, uh, this is the greatest hits basically, but live it has energy. Um, whatever you think of Neil Diamond, he was definitely a, a great showman. So he did uh, Crunchy Granola, um, which I looked up and you know, you, I spoke about in my other video, is just basically about him moving to California and he got into the health trend and he wrote a song about Crunchy Granola, basically cereal. So. Uh, it's a fun song. And let's see, Solitary Man is on here, Cherry Cherry, Sweet Caroline, Porcupine Pie, You're So Porcupine Pie, um, You're So Sweet. It, those are like country style songs, so those are interesting. And uh, Soggy Pretzels, and that's another one where he lays on a thick country accent and talks about a lady who's crying in her pretzels, basically. Uh, Shiloh's on here, Girl You'll Be a Woman Soon, uh, Cracklin' Rosie. Holly Holy, I Am I Said, and then you have a sort of a put together compilation of Solomon, uh, Brother and Brother Loves Travel and Salvation Show, which is one of my favorites. And I'm trying to figure out which album that was on. It's hard to find some of those albums, the good Neil Diamond albums. It's uh, They're very hard to, to come across. But anyway, this was Neil Diamond, uh, is Neil Diamond. Uh, Hot August Night came out in 1972, the year I was born, so this is just as old as I am. Double record set, this one, it sounds good, it's got some, it's got the pops, like I said, but those are the two I'm going to hold on to. 
believe it or not, I had a, um, a copy of uh, The Jazz Singer, which is an album. It used to be a guilty pleasure, but I've accepted that I just like that album, whatever. Uh, but I can't find a good copy of that. Every time I come up and find a copy of that, it's, it's, it's pops all over the place. So I narrowed it down just so I could make some room. And then I will definitely welcome in some good Neil Diamond if I can find those uh, that are clean. Hopefully there'll be some reissues. I haven't seen any reissues. So we'll see. So this is the interesting one. This is Dion. And this is the guy known for his doo-wop. It's on uh, 180 gram vinyl, I believe. It seems a little thinner than 180, but I, I, most everything is on the 180 right now, so not sure. But anyway, black uh, vinyl. It's clean, no pops, great sounding album. Really enjoyed it. Where uh, where I go to get records, Pat over at Kingfish Records, just like you got to you got to hear this one, you got to hear this one. I'm like, okay, I like Dion stuff. I always like Teenager and Love and, and songs like that. I would do that at karaoke. But this is called Stomping Ground. This came out in uh, last year, uh, 2021. It's a blues album and it has so many people on here um, and some familiar songs. The the songs that stick out for me a lot i like the song um dancing girl and mark knopfler plays guitar on that one and he has uh, joe bonamassa which i i i really i appreciate joe bonamassa's um abilities and his skill but he's kind of too technical for me um and i really haven't had a chance to really get into his stuff so he's going to be another guy i check out but um i kind of like my blues older and the established blues guys i just like that that era of blues so i haven't really gotten into him he also has uh, eric clapton on here if you want to rock and roll peter frampton's on here there was a time billy gibbons from uh, zz top and then he does a really cool song that i like here they have a video for it angel in the alleyways and it has patty scalp oh, i'm gonna say her name wrong scalpa i uh, hopefully i said it right and obviously her husband, uh, Bruce Springsteen, they're both on there. Really good album. And you have I've Got to Get to You with Boz Skaggs. Uh, Ricky Lee Jones is on here too. I've been watching. But just a good, solid album. It's a uh, double album set. All on black vinyl. If you haven't checked this album, I'll definitely do it. I was I was pleasantly surprised. And I was I was surprised too. Not surprised, but happy to see that it wasn't overproduced. They they um let let it be a blues album and then let it have a little air to it and not so tight. So it's nice that they did that. Well, that's what I have for you today. I hope you uh, enjoyed that. Uh, definitely leave me some comments. Let me know what you think about these albums or any other albums by these guys or anything that you would like to see uh, as far as uh, content and any episodes that I could create for you. Definitely want to do that. So please hit that like button and that subscribe button notification so you know when I have new videos out. And uh, until next time, you enjoy your music. Talk to you later. Bye.